thank you guys. I know this might be a little bit uncomfortable because you've never you've never done it's anything fine. like this, except for your news interview the other day. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, uncomfortable. She's done that news now and uh, and YouTube. Oh yeah. Remember? Oh yeah. yeah. Christine cleaned out my house. It was nice. <laughs> you're good. pretty much famous. <laughs> pretty much. I mean, you, how many how many thousands of views do you have now? I have no idea. I haven't looked. Hmm. I just looked at all the mean comments. Are you serious? <laughs> People are not nice on YouTube. No, no. That's I mean, the... some were really nice, and some were like, "Wow, she has a lot of clutter. She has a lot of junk." Yeah, that's why Christine's helping me. Yeah, people are relentless. Yeah. And they probably live in a little cluttered apartment somewhere. And they just... I'm like, dude, I have five kids. I work. I'm a clean person. But yes, sometimes papers pile up on top of a cabinet. Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Some people, though, live in those comments. Yeah. And they'll take them to heart. Like, yeah. there's there have been people that have killed themselves over comments. Yeah. Yeah. That's I terrible. feel like if you so want to make it big on YouTube, you have to just brush yourself off and just go... Yeah, I don't think you can read them. Uh, no. Well, but then you also get in trouble for not responding. People, there's some importance in... I'll hire someone to respond. Yeah, yeah. That, that's actually do. a good idea. People do. Yep. Uh, like Joe Rogan said in the beginning, he would look at comments and content. People not are not anymore. nice. You just, there's, it, it hurts your self-esteem too. Well, and, and that's how you can stay real too. I mean, I imagine <laughs> if you're just constantly looking at you're going to constantly try to change yourself and whatever, but just stay the authentic you. I think you got to, to stay the course, you got to you know, have a barrier between you and those comments. Yeah. Well, and that's even what we're trying to teach our kids, even with social media, because we don't let our kids have social media. And it's because of that. Like, even as adults, sometimes social media hurts yeah. or comments hurt. I don't need you kids getting hurt by social media. Yeah. What a weird world. Yes. I don't even know how to navigate it with kids because yeah. we never went through it. I remember dial up internet. Right. <laughs> I remember right. looking Doo -doo. through. Yeah, we just told our kids eighteen. Hey, eighteen, you it's your choice at that point. I'm, we're not gonna, we're not gonna tell you what to do when you're eighteen as far as social media. One, well, obviously, they're still exposed to it a little bit along the way, whether that be uh, through your account or through my account or whatever. But they're still exposed to it in a lot of different ways. So yeah. it's not it's not like they're gonna be like shocked by. Oh, Instagram or YouTube or Facebook because they still get some exposure, which I think I think is important to kind of like gradually do it rather than just be like, hey, the world is my footstool now. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm open to all of it. So, yeah. Well, our almost 15 year old, we were like, well, what do you want social media for? Why do you want that? Well, I want to like showcase gymnastics on there. Yeah, no, we're not letting you do that. We're not letting you run around the leotard on social media and, you know, not being able to navigate who follows you yep. and, oh, just have another follower. This is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The last thing I want to be doing is going through who's, you know, finding out who's following her and trying to yeah. like do that. I don't moderating. have time. We yeah. Moderating figure, that. I don't, I don't want to do that every day. We just figure you don't need it. It's fine. Just you know, let her be, do it. There'll be a time and day for that. In snow clothes. <laughs> oh my God. You can do all your routines as long as snow you're clothes in full or, snow clothes. Yeah. Snoo I'd be fine suits. with that. I'd be you fine with that. Snow suits. Yeah. And in fact, that, that account would probably grow bigger than the others. So. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but again, I don't want my kids as, uh, you know, I don't want their self-worth based on how many likes or how many comments they're getting, regardless of whatever they're posting. I don't want it based on that. So we're just not going that route right now. I think that's smart. Um, so nothing with social media has been consistent in its run, you know, since it, it evolved. Or maybe the consistency has been the inconsistency. But just trying to translate this into you guys, for 14 years, uh, I've known you. And you've been very consistent mm -hmm. over 14 years. Like that's something that I really appreciate about you guys is that you're pretty much the same now as you were, but like upgraded even better. Versions. Yeah. Well, and you know what to expect from us. I feel like Jess and I are pretty transparent, especially with you and Kira, that it's like, you know us pretty well. <laughs> you know what yeah. to expect from us. Yeah. Which is a very important relationship to have. Yeah. I mean, not, not that you want to have that relationship with everybody, but I do think it's important to have that relationship with somebody. Mm -hmm. It's been really good. You guys have helped us out so much in so many ways. Yeah, ditto. Yeah, totally. Likewise. It's been awesome. It has been awesome. <laughs> okay, well, that's the podcast. <laughs> no, um, we'll just like dive right in. What is the meaning of life? That's a good question for Justin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean... Uh, become the best self we can become 
Um, I mean, you probably you caught a little bit of that conversation uh, earlier today as I was coaching gymnastics as we finished up, and you know, I hear here I got all these uh, y young men, and it, it, you know, just trying to teach them every day about how to become their best self, and I use athletics and sports to help do that, and uh, you know, uh, becoming your best self means temporary failures. It means uh, wins. It means exploring new things. It means uh, just an infinite amount of things. So. Um, you know, uh, challenging yourself and, uh, but yeah, I think, I think that's what I'm trying to do every day is just become my best self and help others along the way. And b part of helping others is becoming my best self. So. Yeah. I, uh, I had a conversation with a family member the other day. She was frustrated at another family member or two, and she was just, just frustrated. And I just brought up the point that I said, Hey, you know, with family, you're stuck with family forever, right? Like, and the beauty of life is, is that you're never stuck in one place. Life's not over till it's over. So you always have room to make improvements. And, um, you know, she just was like, I just don't feel like this person's ever going to change. They've always driven me nuts. They will always drive me nuts. And I just made the point. I just said, you know, even when you're 70, you still have time to change. It's not over. And just be patient and be loving. And I just think with life... The key to success is be willing to grow, be willing to change, be willing to learn. Um, and yeah, don't be, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to be better. Jess and I talk about that a lot of just kind of like, what are ways that we can be better? Are we being our best selves? Are we trying? Are we trying to change? Um, are we doing good in that department? You know, yeah. we kind of check ourselves sometimes of going like, are we, are we willing to be better and change? Well, it's funny. I, I wrote my journal for the first time since the start of COVID. Nice. Uh, I look back at the previous post. I was like, that's March 31st, uh, 2020. Oh, I'm doing great. Did it begin um, with mm -hmm. the, the world is now in? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's about what it is. Like, I might have to have a new career mm -hmm. and like, what what is going to be the new normal and all. Anyways, but uh, it was nice to write like my next sentence was the world's still going and everything's kind of back to normal. But um, but, I, but I was reflecting over the last decade of my life and just thinking and I asked Court the question. I says is it enough? Am I doing enough? It, you know, is, and, and, and it was midnight. So I'm like, yeah, you're fine. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, it wasn't, it wasn't a very engaging conversation, but, um, you know, I just think about that a lot. And, uh, you know, again, talk about the, the meaning of life and becoming our best self is constantly evaluating Am I doing enough or am I doing too much in some ways? Am I finding balance and just constantly reflecting and, you know, one of the thing, things I appreciate about our relationship with you and Kira is you guys are constantly putting yourselves out there. You're constantly challenging yourselves in different ways and stretching yourselves, taking calculated risks, uh, and just like, there's no way you're going to look back at your life at 40 and be like, well, I didn't try anything. I've just been living in a box. It's going to be, you know, hey, now I know what I love, what I don't love, what I'm good at, what I'm not good at, what I need to be better at. You're going to know all that stuff. And, and because of that there's always an interesting conversation with you because you put yourself out there. For me personally, I would say you and Kira actually really helped us help me a lot being okay with building a new building for our gymnastics gym. I was really dragging my feet and both you and Kira were like, why do it, do it. It's going to be so great. Like, of course you're going to, of course you take that risk. Like that's what you do. Why not? You know, and that honestly, just your guys' faith in us was really a tipping point for me personally you know i think justin justin's pretty naturally like a risk taker and just happy just to throw it all in and just see what happens i am not yeah. at all um and it i think we balance yeah, yeah we balance each other out but just even yours and kira's support was really helpful to me That's for that yeah, thank you so thanks well and it's not just we wouldn't say that to anybody either it, <laughs> it has to be the right people and you're the type of people that will run with that and, and make it you'll yeah. make it great yeah it's going um, well what you said about your family, and I can say this because I have no idea who you're talking about. Um, <laughs> they said, you said, you know, even when they're 70, they can change. Right. And this one person's focused on hoping that the other person changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it might need to be the other way around. Right. It's interesting. Right. So, totally. you know, sometimes we look at relationships that we have and we're like, man, I wish that person would change. Mm -hmm. But if this is a something consistent, maybe I need to change. Right. And so there's always that too. That's right. something I appreciate about all of us is we're all willing to change as long as it's a positive change. I've definitely changed in negative ways, but I haven't been proud of that. So I've tried to change it back. Well, no, and loving people through it all. Yeah. I think is 
um, you know, you've made commitments to this person or they're a family member, so you're married to them, kind of, you're, you know, you're married to them as far as forever kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you, you love that person through even the things that maybe you don't approve of, maybe the things that you don't love about them and you love them anyway. Sure. The highs and the lows, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're in for the ride. I've always told Courtney, there's pretty much nothing you could do that would make me leave you. I mean, it's like, no, I mean, of course you're going to screw up in some way. And of course I am. I, what is the screw up that wouldn't, if you still loved me, what is the screw up that wouldn't be, that could be too big if I truly loved you and you truly loved me that I couldn't forgive as long as we were both committed to the end goal of being our best selves. And yeah. Yeah. He gave me a free pass to do whatever, whatever I want. Whatever you want. Yeah. You could do anything. You, just can't, you can't quit CrossFit. That's right. If you quit right. CrossFit. That, that He'd is, love that me through that too. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's interesting. Love is love is very interesting. It is. It's a it's a word that says too much. I actually yeah. I actually like kind of hate the English language a little bit in that way. That we say I love my wife the same way I love chocolate cake or True. you know I, I I wish there was and I and I don't know what the language is but I wish there was a uh, more words to describe the different types of love. Mm. I told her I loved her when when uh, we'd known each other uh, what? seven days seven days. <laughs> It's a little different than the love. And there's a seven day love and there's a, I don't know how many year love. And I was like, you're crazy. Pretty much. Yep. Anyways. You need to learn Spanish. <laughs> More words for that. Yeah. Why? We're yeah. friends with you. You do all the Spanish speaking yeah. when we need you to. It's great. <laughs> okay. So when you're trying to have your love talks, just call me and I'll translate. Yeah, translate it. But like, this is yeah. the type of love we're talking about. No, language is weird because I do love chocolate and I love Kira. <laughs> right. They, they're very different. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, this will be for both of you guys, uh, but I think it, in different ways. So we'll start off with Justin. How do you feel like coaching national level gymnasts has translated into being a better father? Oh, wow. Or is it the opposite? <laughs> yeah, I, I'll admit, I try to compartmentalize kind of my coaching and my, and, and my, I don't know, my, how my role as a father. Um, but there's gotta be some crossover, right? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, how about what, like what, your what, expectations for your kids? Well, one thing is, is that I, I mean what I say. I mean, that's a huge yeah. one for me. Uh, I've, I've been, uh, today's a great example. I said, guys, the priority today is to clean up our gymnastics, to yeah. make it look good. If you, if you mess up, if you, if you do something and you don't land it right or whatever, but you go down having good form, you've accomplished the goal today. Yeah. Well, it took about 30 seconds and somebody did something with bad form just to make it. And I was like, yeah. guys, and so I kept reiterating this point of, please, I, I want you to really internalize what I say and I want you to apply that right now. It, that form and presentation and how it looks is going to be the most important thing you do today. And, and just really getting the guys to buy into my words, that, that, that that's what I really am valuing. Um, and, you know, I think that that carries over to how I'm at home as well, that when I say, hey, kids, it's, 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 it's bedtime yeah. or... Or even I love you, that like that my words mean something. I'm not just. I try really hard not to just say something just to say it, or uh, to not to not really feel it, or to say it and not emphasize it. Um, I, I think that's something I really really value. Um, yeah. So and I find that the kids are very responsive to me if I'm if I make a point to really mean what I say. Is that the the virtuosity part? of gymnastics it can be absolutely there's thing there's uh that that's some you know it, it, the the other part of virtuosity is just doing something that is uh up kind of above and beyond um which is something that the danger I, I can actually almost focus on the bad things that i do as a dad and a coach more than the good things um the danger is is i is i become so authoritarian as a coach or as a father that um, uh, the that the kids don't do the behavior or 
do the workout because it's something they want to do. They're doing it because that's what I want for them. Yeah. And uh, I think I think that's a, a failure and something that I need to find more balance in is like, hey, I want you to want this for yourself. And I want to be I want to be equally yoked with you as you do this, not me like dragging you behind me, kicking and screaming, um, but helping my kids do the right things because that's what's best for them. Helping my gymnast perform the right way because and come in and, and own a workout because that's what's good for them, not because, well, coach is going to go off or or, uh, or lay the hammer down if I, if I don't perform a certain way. Uh, I, I need more tools and resources to help that side of things. And I think that there is a lot of carryover between that athletics and, and being a father. Yeah. Plus, you, you've you essentially, I mean, not parented, but kind of parented, 10,000 kids over the years. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of uh, <clears throat> alarming, scary. And at the same time, that's what makes the job pretty awesome all at the same yeah. time. So seeing that kids have impact, I just, just, uh, yesterday I had a couple of kids who are now 25 that came in and spent a couple hours with me just talking about their lives. And, and, and one of the girls said, she's like, you know, would you ever think we'd be where we are now? And it's like, of course I did. Of course I knew you were going to be successful, awesome, you know, people. And anyways, that's, that's pretty rewarding. Well, and Justin loves like that they came and just hung out with it. Like Justin was working on the building. And they just came in like, oh, Justin, we thought you might be here. We just came by to say hi. That's way That's cool. cool. That's cool. Yeah. It means a lot to them. And seeing these kids excel in what, whether it be academics, but also seeing them excel. I've seen them excel in CrossFit and, yeah. and, other, and other avenues. And it's fun and very rewarding, I think, for both of us that uh, um, to, to see kids who have been a part of the gym uh, just be successful in a lot of different areas yeah. and be like, oh, look, you know, they're state champion in this. Or, you know, they're just, I don't know, that's. It's fun to think that we're just a small part of that. Yeah, um, well, probably a bigger part than you'll give yourself credit for. How you do anything is how you do everything, and you taught them to be great in this one area, but not just great at gymnastics, uh, working on their mind, working on controlling their body through their mind, their their attitudes, you know, and all of that transfers to life. Gymna- there's not a better thing for kids to do than gymnastics. It's not. It's not a hard sport to sell because, yeah. it, you know, the, the results do sell themselves for sure. Yeah. And, and seeing these young men and young women and, you know, I'll go to, I'll go to nationals and, and uh, see all these high-level athletes and the percentage of them that are, uh, you know, have a GPA of 3.7 and higher is phenomenal. These, here, these yeah. kids are training 15 hours kind of at the minimum. I'm up to 25 hours and here they're excelling, you know. Uh, and going to Ivy League schools and just like it's it's amazing the balance that they have to find and the and the type of dedication and and uh, yeah just the the mental and physical and they're marrying and balancing both of those yeah. so well. Well, in a world where people don't always want to work hard, these kids know how oh, to work hard. Oh, they're they're working yeah. hard. They're working hard. Yep. And yeah, there's just a lot of value in that. Yeah, I was talking I was talking to a dad just just yesterday. I was like, he was at his his son was kind of struggling to come to come to the gym. And I said, I, I, I get it. You know, it, it, there's many days where I get up and I'm like, oh man, I'm not just, I'm not super thrilled to go out and, and kick the trash out of myself today, but man, I know that's what's best for me. And, yeah. and when I get there, it, it almost always feels good. He's like, yep, that's the same reason I don't get up and work out. Yeah. I was like, no. So you understand a little bit of what your son's going through is he's coming, coming here and he's stretching himself each and every day. And that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, Luke was very sore today. <laughs> like he didn't complain about going, but I could tell he just didn't. It was like this. Yeah, it's hard, right? It's hard well, during the sore. Christmas break, and your schedule's a little different, and yeah. And it is so, important to balance that with with appropriate downtime. And we talk about overtraining in adults, and we, you know, yeah. I think we do need to be extra sensitive to kids and where they're at, and yeah, and they're and it's hard for them to communicate that. Yeah, for sure. Well, and as time goes on, it might be harder and harder for kids to communicate that. Yeah, you know. So you guys and your your, your deal with social media with kids, your kids is so good because they're going to learn to talk. Um, that's interesting. We have a, a mutual friend and she was talking about her. Um, well, I can say it. It, Christine was on the podcast. Yeah. We listened to that. She said that her, her daughter, they were watching. Oh, it was Gilmore girls, right? I think so. I think so. That's funny. You remember that. Yeah. I know I listened to it. And there was a scene where they showed some emotion, like a, a breakup or something like that. She was like, where's that been? Yeah. Wh- where, where is, is that? that? Well, I've never seen that in an actual human. Right. Just in emojis. That's nuts. Yeah. That's so scary. Well, it was about a relationship, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And she was like, people don't call each other and communicate like that. Yeah. So. Which I fall into. 
Like, it's so much easier to text than mm. it is to call somebody. And texting's not bad. That is a form of communication, and it's better than nothing. Yeah, but it's hard to show emotion. Yeah. It's hard to show love. Right. Especially when you're talking about something that's difficult. Yeah. Like, I, I, I try to, anytime I have to have a difficult conversation or a hard conversation, I'm like, or if there's a chance that it can be misinterpreted. Yes. It's always like, I would love to meet in person. Yeah. Because I don't. I mean, it's almost back to like, I want you to know exact, I want you to read my face. Mm -hmm. I want you to yeah. read all that nuances. And I think what, losing that is, is a, is a bad thing for society. For sure. Um, and, and there's so many other uh, messages and signals of reading. Like I can tell you something hard, but you can still see that I care about you. And I think mm -hmm. that that's a hard thing to convey. You can't do that text. over text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, so kind of the same question, but to you, uh, and you don't you know, go out and coach the gymnastics, but you're like the boss lady in the place. That is definitely true. So you're also not a conventional mom and, you know, you're not a stay at home mom, but you are stay with mm -hmm. your kids at home. So right. I work a lot from yeah, home. You work a lot from home, but you also work, you have your business. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that you're a stay at home mom. <laughs> um, how does that all work? How do you balance it? And how do you do great at both? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of mom guilt. I'll be honest. I, I feel guilty sometimes for working um, because my kids really are so important to me and um, I never want them to feel otherwise. <clears throat> I never want them to feel like the gym is more important. So really on a busy day or in a day when I'm stressed, I actually am very honest with my kids of anything that's going on. I'll be like, hey, I've got actually a lot going on gym wise today and I'm sorry I can't be in the middle of your life today. Yeah. I can't. Um, you know, I probably won't cook and the house is a mess. And, um, you know what, you might have to ask your older sister for help with homework today. Um, so I try to be really open and honest of like, Hey, this is what Jess and I have decided to do. And there will be hard weeks. There'll be hard days. There'll be busier days. Um, and my kids really are so great about that. They, yeah. I mean, we bought the business in 2007 and our first was born in 2008. Yeah. It's all they know. Mm -hmm. So they don't know any any different and they really are so good about just going with the flow. So um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's really important to me to be a good mom. It's really important to me to teach my kids. So I just try my best to find that mm -hmm. balance. And if I look at my schedule that day and I'm like, I really don't have much going on gym wise, then... It was like yesterday. It was like, well, we just went to Idaho Falls and we went to a local business there and just did something fun. Cool. Um, a day that I just didn't have much work to do. And then last night, like at 8.30, okay, I was on the laptop getting a few things done for the gym. Just, you know, just trying to find the time for both. Um, yeah. CrossFit is kind of my outlet. It's kind of my time. So I get that for myself. And then I feel better about everything else too. If I take a time, if I take an hour for myself a day, doing something I love, doing something I think is fun, um, then it's pretty easy to to give of myself elsewhere when I've taken care of myself. Like that might sound a little selfish, but no. really I, I can do a lot better when I take care of myself first and then <clears throat> make sure my kids are taken care of, make sure the gym is taken care of. And we just kind of take it a day at a time. That that just reminded me of the the oxygen mask thing. Like put yours put yours yeah. on first before helping others. Cause like, well, you can't, <laughs> You, you can't help somebody if you don't have oxygen yourself. So I don't, I don't think that's selfish at all. I just think that that's, yeah, I think it's just a requirement to be your best self. It might sound selfish in the society. Yeah. In the living, vernacular or whatever, but it's maybe the least selfish thing. You're, you're really making it to where you can give of yourself fully. Yeah. Well, and I communicate pretty well too with Justin. I'll be like, Hey, I've got a really busy week gym wise. I need you to step it up in the dad department. And he will, you know, and I, I've gotten better about vocalizing that. It used to be, can't you see that I'm drowning? Step it I'm up, like, dude. Nope, I have no, no I haven't Look, noticed. Looks like you're a great swimmer. I don't know. <laughs> so Swimming been, great, hon. I've yeah, been better awesome. about being like, hey, I really need you this week to help with housework. Or I really need you to run the kids to and from activities. Or, hey, I actually need three hours to sit here on my laptop and just get stuff done. And, 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 and most of the time, he's really good about that. You know, I... I Again, everything's balanced and you hope you're doing it right along the way. But I don't think there's anything wrong for kids to also see that mom and dad are busy and working oh, hard. Mm -hmm. And that um and and while court's working hard, that, that there has to be a little bit more independence and and that, you know, she's not gonna hold her hand their hand through everything. And I think I think that's also can be a good thing. And as, as long as they yeah. understand why, that it's not because 
uh, you know, that they're, they're not important or anything like that. But I, I think, I don't know. I, I see our kids is recognizing that we work for everything that we have. Well, you know? we and point that out. From... We, we do point that out a lot too. We're having a nice meal on the table and I'm like, listen, you know why? Because dad and I work our butts off. Yeah. Like this doesn't come for free or those new shoes you got. Yeah, dad works really hard for the, so that so that you can have nice things um, and that we don't go hungry. And, you know, I we really I actually point that out a lot to my kids, like kind of the I mean, not that that's everything, but it is um, it's nice to have what we need. That's yeah. that's a huge blessing in this day and age. And so I try to point that out a lot to my kids. Like, he, hey, we work hard so that we can enjoy a nice meal. Yeah, I mean, we all get it, right? I mean, with, with Apple Pay and other things, I mean, oh, all yeah. they think is like, well, if I tap my phone on something, then <laughs> yeah. we get things. Yep. So it's, yeah, I don't know. It's good No, every understand. hour you work translates to, you know, keeping your family afloat. Yep. So. Yeah, it's been interesting to see Lincoln work a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, I love yeah. when kids have to manage yeah. their own money. It's so good for it's, them to it's see. It's so great. Yeah. And it's, he kind of learned pretty quickly, like, <laughs> oh, it's, and he's making good money for what he's doing like nine dollars an hour or something yeah that's awesome and uh and it's hard work <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, hard freezing yeah. cold work he gets home and just like passed exhausted that's great. oh that's so good but for him he's like that's nine dollars per hour and if i work five hours and then half of that goes to savings mm -hmm. and you know we talk about the importance of tithing and so then that mm -hmm. and he really doesn't have a lot to spend after right, right? exactly like, wow. he's like all right. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah. He's, he's motivated. Yeah. So. Yeah. We have a similar system worked out with our kids, like half to savings, 10% tithing. Hey, and then I don't care. We don't, you can do whatever yep. you want, but man, it's but quickly how the rest of that goes. It's a finite so resource. Fast. You know, yeah. it's like, okay, there is going to be an end to this. And, uh, and, well, and, and when they, that. when they work so hard for their own money, I think they look at your money, like as adults and go like, oh, wow, that really, thank you for you know, buying like yesterday, I paid for ice cream for my kids, and my oldest was like, "Mom, I have money. It's okay." It's, she saw the bills. She was yeah. like, oh, wow, that was, that was a lot. Like, Mom, I, I've got mine. I'm, yeah. I'm like, no, hey, this is my treat. Like, it's fine for today. You know. Yeah. Um, but it really makes them more grateful. Like, oh yeah, I see the value in you work hard and you get a paycheck. That's not free. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it was, good. I remember being a little bit. Em it's probably a little bit embarrassing, but having a gas card as a 15 year old and filling up with gas and being like, I can drive anywhere. And then my parents taking away that gas car and being like, all right, I, I don't, I, does anyone else want to drive? Like, I don't, I don't want to drive. Uh, this is expensive. But. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys are doing a good job from the outside. And, and every time you talk with one of your kids, they're just, they're so good. They don't they're, make eye contact though. That's not good. <laughs> oh, we're it. Taylor slowly got to where it was a complete avoidance. She'll give you a smirk. To, to a smirk every once in a while. It's a fist bump. So... <laughs> Um, do you see, I'm sure you do just see massive, uh, differences in each one of your kids? Like, <laughs> I was just thinking that the other day about our nine year old, almost 10 year old. I'm like, where'd this kid come from? He's <laughs> so different. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. What, what did yes. I, I heard a quote the other day What you know, uh, how do they feed from the same trough and all turn out so different? And, uh, that, that is, they're, they're all definitely very much individuals and, I have no clue why. Well, the worst is when you see like unfavorable things about some of your kids. You're like, that is so me. Dang it. Yeah. That is me. Yeah. All the bad things. I'm like, dang it. I'm sorry. Kira. I'm so sorry. That's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's it, it. But it's fun. It's fun to see them. And it's fun to, that they're at such multiple, they're at very multiple ages, all of ours. I mean, five to 15, like yeah. they're all just learning and becoming themselves and, um, it's fun to talk through things with them. It's fun to try and teach them. It's fun to also let them figure things out on their own. Like it's fun. We yeah. love like right now, if we could keep them the ages that they are now, oh, we yeah. would, we yeah. would love it. We could be happy forever. But... Totally agree. I mean, as long as, yeah, yeah. I mean, they've got a few <laughs> things, but no, I, I was just thinking about, you know, it makes me think a lot about the eternity of the soul that these kids turn out so different and that, that we have these billions of people that have lived on the earth and yet um, we're all so different yeah. such individuals. It's like, gosh, there has to be something more Yeah. because there's only, I mean, I guess there's an infinite way to raise the kids, but it's like, how do we all end up so different with such quirks and nuance uh, to each of us that it's like, yeah, the eternity yeah. of the soul, there's something there. Yeah, you know? yeah, there's got to be so much more that we just don't, 
don't get or yeah. don't know how to tap into or, or can't remember. Can't remember. Yeah. And that's fine. It's fun. It is. But that makes me think, oh, maybe that's not my fault. Yeah, it happened beforehand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know all the secrets. Right. Someday. Um, so take us through Madison Gymnastics. That's been 17 years. Mm, Fall quite. 2004 it opened. Yeah. Is that it, it opened uh, because, well, there was a, a need in the community is that there was a family that moved here from Seattle that had two girls that did competitive gymnastics. They moved here um, and they didn't have anything locally that they could, any gym that they could compete for. And so, um, well, actually, and I don't even know. I don't even think the intention was to do for them to continue doing competitive gymnastics because I kind of remember kind of pitching that and being like, hey. she Yeah, she was like, no. Yeah, I and I was like, that. but they wanted a gym for their kids to train in. There was a kind of a legit gymnastics gym that had the the, app, the all the different apparatuses and that just had nice equipment. And uh, yeah, that was in 2004. And then I came in not too long after that spring of 05 and uh, just saw this beautiful little gym with nice new equipment and was like hey we you know we can do some things here and um started coaching and uh and court and justin got, was like one of four coaches yeah four four or five mm -hmm. coaches and uh you know uh probably a couple hundred kids in the gym what do you think maybe not even that when we bought the business it was at 220 yeah so that and that was a couple years later mm -hmm. so um then you know while while i'm coaching and we're going to school courtney and i get married and then court comes in and starts she the, the gymnastics world was totally foreign to her she came from lacrosse and soccer and uh yeah and so she kind of got familiarized she would come home and i'd kind of quiz her on yeah. like gymnastics terminology That's and awesome. what types of classes like what does pt mean what is boys one five six? She's What's like this? it's physical therapy, and that's what you <laughs> yeah, were supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she was she she was banking on something a little bit different for me, but uh, yeah. What's PTOT mean? And uh, anyways, and so we kind of talked about those things, and she can't kind of gave gained an understanding for the classes and became a really good uh, proficient office helper and then manager and and then uh, no, I was just a secretary when we bought the business. So, oh, but that's I had true. it was nice because. I was able to like, I knew the programming, knew, knew the program, kind of knew the, the backside of things a little mm -hmm. bit and, and started building relationships with the parents. I mean, and our business yeah. is 99.9% uh, .9 of our business growth has come through word of mouth. Yeah. I mean, like all of it. We, I mean, that was yep. before social media. Right. Um, and, uh, anyways, 2007 comes and they're like, Hey, we can see the writing on the wall. Uh, the economy's, kind of shrinking here for the industry we're in and so we're gonna head back to seattle and would you guys like to buy it and we're like yeah let's do it and well uh, and we really thought it was just gonna be kind of a side gig maybe we'll do it for a couple years yeah that was a creepy <laughs> joe biden voice anyways yeah i did and i was like this who knows where this just could go. saw more of the potential i was like this will never make oh. us a living but it's kind of fun and let's just kind of see where it goes and yeah here we are still doing it <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then short so, was at 2008, we built the, the new yeah. building because we knew that renting long term was going to be the big. Yeah. Financially, we we're kind of like, hey, if this ever need, wants to like make money for us, we're going to have to own this building because it's the too rent big was of a payment. so expensive. Yeah. And we were just like, we, you know, we're not we're paying ourselves, what, 50 bucks a month. <laughs> like We got to be able to like make this a little more in our own favor. So, yeah. So we went in actually originally when we bought the business, we bought it with Justin's parents. Um, and then we bought it from their half out. I can't remember what year that was. Maybe just like two or three years later. Yeah, it's like 2009, mm -hmm. 2010. And like yeah, yeah. Um, but I think we both really love what we do. I remember maybe five years ago, we had gone out to dinner in Applebee's. And I don't know if it was just a midnight crisis or Justin goes, let's just envision our lives for a minute. Like, what if we, what if we sold the business and just maybe I'll go back to school. Maybe I'll do the whole physical therapy therapy thing. So just side note, when we were dating, Justin's like, yeah, I want to be a physical therapist. I'm like, sweet. Yeah, I'm in. Like, let's do it. Like, let's get married. <laughs> let's get married. Be married to a doctor. That, that sounds, sounds good. Simple. That yeah. sounds great. Yep. Um, so anyway, but I remember sitting there fighting back tears and I'm not really that much of a cry crier, especially in public. And I was just like envisioning my life without the gym. And I was like, no, absolutely not. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to make you keep doing this because, That's uh, cool. And especially just thinking of our kids, 
we give our kids an out all the time. I've always said to my kids, you don't have, just because we own the gym does not mean that you have to make this your life too. Like we yeah. never force you. Okay. The force would be a power tumbling class once or twice a week. That's what yeah. I would make my kids do because it's good for them. But beyond that, you know, they don't have to do the competitive cheer. They don't have to do the competitive gymnastics. We've never, but they love it. It's their yeah. life as much as it's our life. And, um, and so I just was envisioning just not having that for them and not having the community that we have. And I just was like, no, I am not ready for that. Give me another 20 years and maybe I'll be ready. But um, it, it is a huge blessing in our life. And I think we both agree. It is a huge blessing to be able to do what we do for a living and have the community involvement and the friend. I mean, you look at all the associations that we have the and they've all been, you got, I, I, yeah. I can't even begin to list them, but they're, yeah. they're all the most important relationships mm -hmm. that we have in our life. Right. And, right. and just uh, so many just good people coming through those doors. Um, I just appreciate and I appreciate our coaches so much. I appreciate the parents. I appreciate the kids. Just so many great relationships. It's why we love Rexburg. If yeah. we didn't have the gym, I don't think that I wouldn't see a huge, huge reason for us to stay in Rexburg. We just we. But right now you it. couldn't get us out of here kicking and screaming. No. Like we do whatever yeah. we could to stay right. at this point. Exactly. Um, absolutely love it. Yeah. I mean, you love it enough to invest in another property and building mm -hmm. how's that going it's going good good yeah it's going well i mean this has only been what month three month four so yeah i mean financially yeah it's a little bit nerve-wracking but um it, it's all the it's all motivation for us just to keep working harder and just to make you know make it all work because we want it to work we don't want to yeah. fail we want to be successful and we will do whatever we can to make sure that it works. And I can't remember Tyler if it was you, but I mean, uh, uh, they said it, I'm pretty sure it was, but you know, you, you work hard, you treat people right. And it's hard to fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really hard to fail. And, uh, I think the new gym and the new facility is part of that. It's like, well, no, we will do whatever it takes and we'll do what we, what we can to part of the effort. Courtney and I both looked at each other when we started building the building and said, well, look, why are we doing this? Are we doing it for money? Or are we doing it because this is what's best for our clients and, and our coaches? And we had to really think about that. And the honest truth is it's what's best for our clients and coach. I don't think we had a, we didn't do it. What, what tipped us over the, the edge, I guess, is doing it for them and, and creating an environment that was more conducive to learning, that took some of the stress away, that made it safer. There was a lot of reasons that it, and it had to be those reasons, not financial reasons. Now, I do, I do think the financial part will come, yeah. but that, that couldn't be the tipping point for us. And so, you know, it's nice to see that the, busy, the building's busy, that it's being filled, that um, uh, we're finding creative ways to use the, the space. And there's some dark uh, masochist part of me that wants to do it again. Yeah. That wants to put me through, put, put myself He's through building forgotten. it again. He's already forgotten. He's already forgotten how yeah, rough yeah. the last year has been. I just see the value in uh, in investing in property and providing. I mean, this little subdivision even that we're in, you know. Yeah. Um, we love this street, right? Yeah. It's right? a great, it's a great it. street. <laughs> hey, the, the idea of adding another building in here and and being able to offer more. I mean, as we were building it, there was there was lots of interest in, in the space and in where we're at and um, people in kind of like-minded industries. And, yeah. uh, and, I, and I can see a real need there. And I think that the more, I mean, you guys are a great example of that. You built this uh, big, nice, beautiful building and, y you know, filling it with, people that are interested in rock climbing, working out, and, and again, the gymnastics community, I think that's that's awesome. And I would love to see, you know, physical therapists and yeah. other things that complement our industries in, in this area. And I could I could just see some real value in that. Yeah, and a, a taco trailer. And a taco trailer, of course. <laughs> yeah. Goes right along with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, I, I will say the last two year, two or three years as our, as our enrollment has just grown. I remember it was summer 2020, like we were kind of closed for a few minute, few months for COVID. And then summer 2020, it just was like, boom, like where we live, southeastern Idaho, people just were very, yeah. just, they didn't care. Yeah. I'm like, oh like my those gosh. six weeks were, were like a fire under their butt. Yeah. 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 So our like enrollment we are that gonna summer invest in our kids. was really um, kind of record breaking, which we needed because we had been closed for three yeah. months, you know, and, and we looked at that and then we went into fall 2020 and then winter 2021 and our enrollment was just growing and it was awesome to come in and see such a full gym, but it also made me uncomfortable. I was like, 
people aren't getting the best quality when the gym is filled to max capacity, right? Yeah. Like I want these kids to have space. and that, Which is so that funny because we'd worked for the last decade to, to try to get that to max capacity. And yeah. then when we got there, we were kind of like, I don't oh. love this product as much. Like I want to offer more. Like we just felt like I wanted to come into the gym and feel like it's full, but not overfilled. Yeah. And that was kind of the tipping point of like, okay, building another building is the right thing to do, even though it's scary. I but it was the, the right thing I to do. I love the growth because that took... <laughs> Just what you said. You tried for 10 years to fill it. And then once it's almost filled, you're like, oh, Uh -oh. (laughs) I've got to do more. Yeah. Right. It's cool. And that's a hard decision to make because you're kind of recommitting your life to it for another Mm -hmm. 20 years. (laughs) Yeah. We love to talk about how old we're going to be when this is all said and done and paid off. Right. It's a little. (laughs) Actual retirement. You're not, you're you're not the type. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to retire. We're not going to really ever retire well yeah. it's so true i say all the time i want to retire when i'm 55 and then i think well what am i going to do when i retire when i'm 55 well i'll probably go into the gym a few hours in the week yeah. and i'll end up doing exactly what i'm doing yep. but boy i'd love to say it when i'm 55 <laughs> yeah maybe having a yeah now complex, with this new building i'm like sorry it's 65 now sorry about that <laughs> no it'll be fine as it'll long be as great you we have a care. couple good vacations a year you don't ever that's it's kind of true we're like it's we don't so need to retire we can just kind of keep doing what we're doing until we die why not yeah it's I like that I, bad it's pretty good life love my parents if they listen to this <laughs> um you know you'll just call them and they're like eh, we're not really doing anything today and you know but they're happy like they have cows totally. and, a, and a garden and yeah. stuff that's just not for me like yeah. it works for them mm-hmm. it's great but i'm like I would rather manage some apartments, not yeah. like they're managing them. Yeah. Own them. Have a manager. Right. Um, run some businesses, go on vacation. Yeah. Add value to the world. Right. And then die on a vacation. Like how cool would it be yeah. to like die on a hike? <laughs> die in the Caribbean. When you're, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's my dream. Yeah, that's <laughs> not too bad. Yep. I want to be hiking in Costa Rica when I'm 95 and Maybe die. Maybe keel over. Yep. Yeah. Maybe a flash flood. It'd be kind of fun <laughs> yeah. way to go out. Yeah. Know. Well, then other people We've almost might been die. one of those. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's not... Right. Yeah. I just watched one of a volcano where a bunch of people died on a cruise ex- uh, excursion. Are you serious? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's terrible, but I mean... I guess At the same time, it's lava. Like, you'll die pretty fast. There's and what steam. a cool stool. Oh, that sucks. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, awful. But, again, if you're going to go out, go out on vacation. <laughs> yeah. But I, I like what you said, though. I mean, add value the whole time. Like, once you stop yeah. adding value... Well, and maybe the older you get, maybe a little less commitment. I mean, right now, your commitment to the gym, at least, is five to six days a week. Absolutely. You know, as as the years go by, I'd love it to be like, hey, you need to be there three or four days a week. And, you know, and then maybe, hey, you just go in when you want to kind of thing. And that's yeah. that's nice. So I can see as we get towards like the 50, 55-year-old that it will turn into more of that of, yeah. hey, we go in when we want and and that kind of thing. But They're like, oh, geez, Justin's here again. <laughs> the old yeah. cranky the old cranky coach is here. Don't, don't, let him start, <laughs> don't let him start talking to you. You won't be able to coach your class. <laughs> right, right. He won't, he won't let you go. I don't know. I don't know. Why I don't are old people like that? I don't Why know, is it all like of them. that? Always... <laughs> It's all of them. And then the older they get, the longer you stick with them. And you walk away and you're like, I hope I'm never like that. They're so sweet and they're so great, but I don't want to be like that. But yeah. I think if you let yourself get out more and you, you're involved more, then you're not going to be as clingy, maybe. I think, I, think, I think there's some truth to that. I don't know. My parents are not clingy, really. Like, for the most part, they're like... Oh, you're coming over today. Great. <laughs> but she loves her. Parents. Hope you're only staying for half hour. No, my parents are great, but but they're not the clingy type. I think they get enough. They're just not really social, and they're happy with that. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and I hope when I said that about my parents, like they are happy, <laughs> they're good. Yeah. And like they, their whole life, it was let's work to retire, and so right. they're doing exactly what they planned on. What doing. they wanted to do. So it's it's cool. And my parents are doing their first cruise next year. Their first cruise ever. I'm so proud yeah, of them. Awesome. I was almost <clears throat> crying. So happy for them when they told me that they had booked a cruise. <laughs> what cruise is it again? I can't remember. Oh Mediterranean. Gosh, Mediterranean, one? and, and they're going to end up in Rome, and then they're going to go to Switzerland. So, like, but my parents are just kind of homebodies, and they're so happy with that. And so this was this is a big deal with them. That sounds fun. We should go crash the cruise. Oh, <laughs> uh, I actually we've totally talked agree. about it. Yeah. We haven't been invited, but we could crash it. <laughs> but if we there, just tickets for sale, to book it on the yeah. spot, right, right, right. Oh my gosh, how funny would that be? Head up to the Lido deck and be like, "Oh, mom, funny you guys are here." <laughs> Andy's drinking? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, I would die. That would throw me for a loop. Well, so Tyler, question for you. Uh, do you feel like, I mean, you mentioned that your parents 
are retiring and that they're doing what they want to do. But yet we kind of sit here and we're talking about it and I'm kind of going, we kind of have a different vision for the future. Do you think that's a generational thing? Mm. Or do you think uh, we're, we're just seeing what they're doing and going, no, we want to do it differently because that's what kids do? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Are we just question. being different to be different? Or Tyler's not used to being asked the questions. He's yeah. He's, oh, he's, are you he's confused right now. I'm, I'm gonna shut down right now. That's <laughs> um, like me this whole interview. <laughs> I I don't know. I've heard you'll either become the exact same as your parents, or you'll become the opposite. Hmm. I don't know if I quite believe that. I think that I have qualities. There's some in between. On, yeah, on on both directions. Well, and don't you think who you marries? also oh, makes sure. a difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like... Yeah. I mean, what we've done in life, it's interesting because in the beginning, Kira never thought of herself as entrepreneurial mm-hmm. or anything. But all and she's ever... Her go. All she's ever known is entrepreneurial. Right. Yeah. That's her all family. her parents have ever done. Her dad never had a normal job. Right. Her mom, n- mom never had a normal job. Right. They, she true. was an inventor. He had businesses, you know, all of that. Whereas mine was the, the complete opposite. My dad always worked really hard and, and, you know, had a job that he worked hourly or sal- salary for. Right. So for me to even think, oh, I can go start a business, it's pretty foreign. Like that's, that's hard. It was weird for Kira because she always just thought, well, I'll have a husband with a job. Right. That's funny. But... But that isn't where she yeah. came from. It's not where she came from. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and I don't think I'm a lot like Jim, but she kind of just, you know, married her dad in a way. That's like, kind of funny. Yeah. Which women do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sounds, sounds very I gross. I did not. But, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> um, so I don't know if it's generational. Yeah. I think mine is more just, I know myself and unless something drastic changes, I can't sit around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't want retirement to be sitting around. And I've seen too many people, even working, you know, 10 years on the, on the ambulance, I've seen too many people retire and die yeah. Yeah. because they just stop. I don't want to sit around waiting to die. That's miserable. Well, and I think I'm maybe, not going to be like that. Maybe that's why we want to be different is because I, I think our generation has seen that. We've yeah. seen people kind of sit there and just kind of slowly exit life stop slowly. Stop coming to family events. Yeah. Stop being involved. We and, see that and go like, mm, yeah. Okay, maybe what's that's so what's, sad to me. Let's look at this a little differently. Maybe yeah. there's a different way we can do this. And I don't know, it's yet to be seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when I was doing OPEX, um, the OPEX fitness training, mm-hmm. training level one stuff, uh, they always talked about just living to not live in a nursing home. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of adapted that to be live to be 95 and not in a nursing home. Right. Or I would go on ambulance calls and I would see little old people that had just fallen over. It's like, man, if they had a strength program 30 years ago, like, you know, where yeah. would they be today? Yeah. And really, I think most things that we do now are based around that, you know, just CrossFit, rock climbing, yoga, the videos that I do online, the coaching people, it's really just longevity. Like there's no point mm-hmm. in living if you're just going to, can. The, what, what normally happens is they're, we're kind of fit-ish in high school, other than that's going away. And then they get pretty fit to get married and then it all goes downhill from there like that's historically right, what right. happens to mm-hmm. the general pop- population right usually you're looking at facebook yeah. pictures and you're like they look one way when they yep. when they got married and then you're looking at about a decade and a half later and you're yeah. like all right you look quite a bit different yeah so from 25 to 30 is like peak years and they're never getting healthier after 30 yeah. it's just getting more unhealthy that's nuts that's because yeah. you should have another 70 years that you can thrive or at least say have another 50 years where you can continue health and then time is going to decline our health, but it's not how it goes. It's 30. They're, mm-hmm. they're 15% body fat. And by the time you're 40, you're 25% body fat and then 35. And you know, we know what happens. Well, and I think as you hit your thirties, you kind of, you know, thirties and forties, you kind of really start to see how fast time goes. You're like, you know, actually this life is pretty short. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you only have so much time to be in great shape and to use your time wisely and to use your life wisely. And it really is kind of motivating to go, no, I don't want to live my life because there's not that much of it. I don't yeah. want to live my life um, uncomfortable. Yeah. And it can end so fast. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I look at it and go, I, at best, I've got three and a half to four more decades left. <laughs> What am I, what am I going to, what am I going to do with those? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. How old would that make you? That's sad. <laughs> yeah. 75. 75, 80. Don't die. No, you'll be 95. Right? Well, I, I mean, like, so, but, but I, don't I anticipate things will start fading, right? Yeah. Around that time, hopefully. But if yeah. I could if I could make the next three and a half to four decades pretty awesome and ha- and and kind of set some real goals and, and keep some level of ambition in all the different healthy areas of life, like... Yeah, just I kind of I kind of hope to do that. Well, and that yeah. mindset's so important too. I really do believe a lot. You know, we've talked about this before, but just how well if you believe it, you can achieve it, kind of thing. I mean, that sounds yeah. stupid, but oh, I actually no. think that that is. Tyler does not huge. think that sounds stupid. I know <laughs> no. you're talking to the wrong guy to say no. that sounds stupid. That um, is, Tyler. but but yeah, just even envisioning your life just to be healthy and strong and um, full of just goodness and happiness. Well, yeah, make it happen, right? That's yeah. your that's your slogan, Taylor. Make it happen. There was a book by Parley P. Pratt, and I, I can't remember if it was the key to the science of theology, which I think I have here. Maybe sitting on the shelf. <laughs> Might be, um, or it was another one by Parley P. Pratt, and it was way ahead of his time. He talked about how when you think something, you're actually there's some type of molecule going on up there because you can see it. Like when you're imagining something, you're, you're, you see it. Or when you dream, you're dreaming it. You're seeing it in person, Mm -hmm. in, you know, in mind person. Right. And that's the only way to start creating something. And then it comes out in physical form later. Yeah. Or if you think about Christ, he is the word. Well, that's a weird thing to call somebody Mm -hmm. the word, but maybe words are powerful. So we speak words, we create thoughts those thoughts become things it's actually like you say it sounds weird and it does sound weird like thoughts become things but all the prophets everything have well it. and everything you do i guess starts with a thought right yeah. so i guess That's it has true. to start somewhere yeah it's it's really interesting yeah. so our thoughts are super powerful um and you guys ha- you're a living embodiment of that you just maybe haven't thought of it hmm. you know it's it's this is the half-baked thought but i mean i think it's kind of like miracles it's that uh Miracles is kind of a thought that some people don't believe in miracles, but maybe it's because those miracles almost become a, a self fulfilling prophecy because we will them into being. Yeah. You know, is a miracle that so and so survived from, you know, such and such a tragedy? Um, or is it that there was just a certain amount of willpower and a certain amount of like strength that come through thoughts, through words, through, through, uh, um, a will and desire to live that kind of made that miracle come to be, but does it make it any mir- less miraculous that our words and our thoughts yeah. made it happen? Yeah. Well, and maybe some of the miracle is recognizing the miracle. Absolutely. Because it's also easy to go, well, that was a coincidence. That was just, yeah. You know, I watched this thing about this guy the other day that had um, low, low lung cancer. So it's like deep, deep lung cancer. And all the doctors are like one month to three months and you're dead. And he went to see this one wacko doctor that's like I actually think you have parasites in your lungs Wow! so he started to fast and which is funny because you think fasting and prayer you're like oh well that's the miracle of well it, it physiologically probably had a lot more mm-hmm. or had I'm not right. trying to de- defund well there's a de- reason why we fast since part yeah. of it is yeah it's healthy yeah part of it is yeah. it's good for you <laughs> um, and then he got on these like electrolytes and, and he was taking like some weird weird stuff that uh, like hydrogen peroxide just yeah. interesting but in this one doctor's mind he's like you kill the parasites yeah and that's the cancer so he does it he's been alive for like 10 years now wow and all these other all these other doctors are like it's uh, it, it's a miracle. It's mm-hmm. it's it can only be said as a miracle. And the guy's like, well, yeah, but the miracle is that I found this other doctor that told right. me I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't going to die in three months. Right. You know, so it's recognizing it too. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah, we. I mean, we we've talked about our we've talked with our kids about that, just about miracles. And um, there's I I'm really bad at quotes, but there was some quote that I read in the last few months that just said, more or less, expect miracles in your life. Expect them. Watch for them. Record them. Talk about them. And it, it really is interesting when you sit back and you have that mindset of thinking on on the daily or on the weekly of what kind of miracles have I seen in my life lately? And there really, there really is a lot. Yeah. There is a lot of things that sometimes things just go perfectly, perfectly well, or perfectly planned. And it just, it's amazing. And I don't know, just recognizing that and feeling the gratitude of that is, is pretty powerful. Yeah. Uh, a great example of that is two young 20-year-olds not driving a little small business into the ground 
with yeah. no experience in business. Oh man, at sometimes all. I've looked at our numbers and been like, how did we make it work those few months? Or how did and it just does and yeah, I definitely, it's not just us. I know yeah. that. I actually maybe have never verbalized this before, but I remember dropping out of college and... Uh, oh, you dropped out of college? Dropped out of college, <laughs> yes. Dropped out of college <laughs> and uh, and uh, thinking like, this is kind of nuts. Like me doing this is the beginning of committing to having to make this work. Yeah. And uh, I remember that actually really terrifying me. And then... But it was like, no, we're going to take this little business. At, at the time, we were probably pay, paying ourselves 250 mm -hmm. maybe $500 yeah, a month Yeah, you were from. still doing quite a bit on the side. And just like, we're going to make this work. And yeah. it like it was a shift in mindset that was like, this has to be it because I'm, I've am i committed now. And We felt that way too when we bought our first house. We were like, uh-oh, oh, yeah. we have a mortgage now. We've got to like make this how, work. <laughs> before, we, where we barely had apartment rent because we'd managed so much. Right. It was like, yeah. oh my we goodness, how pay. would we ever make this work? Mm -hmm. And then what do you do? You put your nose to the grindstone and and, and blessings and miracles and prayers mm -hmm. happen and, and it works. That's yeah. so funny. We did the same thing. Yeah. We rent it or we yep. managed until <laughs> we bought a house. Right. Yep. Right. It's so interesting. <laughs> um, there's that story of Cortez when he gets there and he tells all of his guys to burn the boats. That's the only way they were going to win. It's a fake story, but it's a really good one. You know, so it's not we, real. Yeah, it's not real. Um, interesting, but it's what you said. Once, once there is no uh, second option, or second another option, option, you make you just, it work. You just make it work. Mm -hmm. yep. You just go. I actually think that's lost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are that that second option that third option like got to keep my options open it's like no you got to close some doors yeah it's interesting I, uh, this is only loosely connected to what we're talking about but i remember talking to a, a, a young man about dating and being like why why aren't why aren't more young people getting married and he's like i think there's too many options he's like i look look on facebook and i see all these girls and i imagine kind of life going like well we'll, we'll this one's good for this reason, and this one's good for this reason. There's all these options. Well, and everyone's profile pictures look better than they are. Well, yeah, that might be part of it too. But yes, but it's kind of interesting, right? Like it was like he, there was this feeling of uncommittedness. What what could I be missing out because I'm going to make a choice and go with it? And I think that buckling down, making a choice, and going going with it is. Well, and that's yeah. that's true in marriage too. It's like, hey, absolutely, I'm you've that. made the choice. Let's be committed and make this work, and let's be happy together. Rather than in being my like, mind, you can always be looking. You can always be going like, oh yeah, well, I wish I would have, you know. Or you can be really happy with what you've what you've chosen and make it awesome. You make it work because it's the only option. I don't look at our marriage and go like, oh, well, there's another option. There's a way. There's a backup. Or there's a way. Yeah. It's like, no, this. I don't. There's not a morning I wake up and go like, well, I, maybe I'm not interested in resolving that problem or that concern. It's like, no, of course it's going to work because yeah. there is no other option. I actually think always having that what if, what if would just be a, such a crappy way to live. It would. Just totally. make a decision. Be quick to decide and slow to change. So Absolutely. in seven days, you're like, Courtney, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> quick decision. <laughs> quick decision. Right. Slow to change. And you've made that work over time. And I actually think that love was a decision. Yeah. It's interesting, right? Like, it's not like I knew her so, so well. We'd known yeah. each other for seven days. But it was like, I'm making a decision. And it yeah. was that my decision is to love you. And, you know, that's what I'm now committed to. And one good maybe nice thing about myself was I've never wavered on that decision. Yeah. Well, I'm, really, I'm in. You're like, this chick's hot. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> no. And she looks the same she did. Oh, yeah. No, they, they like Except age. I say they because her and, and Kira, they like age like fine wine. Kira yeah, got right. carded like in the casino last year. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's not aging. Yeah. Still getting yeah. carded to see her. Wasn't that even an 18-year-old one too? Was that 18 or did you have to be 21? On a, on a cruise uh, ship and they're yeah. like, oh, we're carding you. <laughs> No, that one wasn't that one. No, uh, that was in Puerto Rico. Puerto, Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. Yeah. Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is Puerto Rico twenty one or eighteen? See, that's what I, I can't, can't remember. remember. I, yeah. But I, either way, it was funny. Yeah, it was great. Like, yeah, I married a sixteen year old. Okay. <laughs> I was like, this is my daughter. Okay, yeah. she's good. <laughs> yeah, she, she can come in. That's great. <laughs> that's awesome. What do you guys have planned in the next year to to make everything I was just thinking about that last better. night. I was like, whoa, New Year's goals. And after reading, you know, your five paragraphs of New Year's goals, I was like, crap. I've never had that to do. <laughs> and honestly, like after the next morning when I woke up, I was like, some of those are so unattainable, hmm. which is okay. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I'm not saying I won't reach them, but I mean, right. it's a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I like that you put it all down and that you put it out for the world to see. Like yeah. that's just, you know, that's good. That's good motivation. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm very much a private 
goal setter because I don't want to fail in front of people. So yeah. I love that. Well, you, that is totally actually, your MO. Uh-huh. I'm really good at failing, so. But you like you always talk about like well you have to fail to succeed yeah. or you, you know and you're you're right it's just you fail, know fail that's forward. that's why even like with CrossFit I'll be like I won't even give it my all because I'm like I don't want to fail like oh that felt that lift felt good I'm not gonna put on any more because I don't want to fail I don't yeah. want to fail the lift I could do a lot more things if I was willing to fail but <laughs> it's so it'd be better so, it's funny to see your personality and like no Tyler that will come up and be like here life. just put more five pounds on no I'm good no no nope. no. <laughs> It's such a funny mindset shift, though, because let's say you've just lifted 135. That's a win. Yeah. Right. So if you lift 140, it's not a and fail. And you fail. But if you lift 140 and you can't get it up or whatever, and then and then you feel like if you kind of end yeah. it like, ah, you don't end on but the it's best only note. But it's only a mindset shift yeah. because you didn't, you didn't fail at 135. You are trying at 140. Yeah. So yeah. you succeeded at 135. Now you're trying 140. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's so true. So anyway, no, I actually haven't um, put forth a ton of thought into next year's goals. I New Year's yeah. goals are tough uh-huh. because it's like you also want to be intrinsically motivated to do what you write down. So it's hard to say, well, 2023, boom, here you go. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, well, maybe I don't want to start on January 1st. Maybe I want to start today. Maybe I right. want to start a week after. Yeah, I've never yeah. really loved, but it, I, I've never loved the whole mindset of like, oh, New Year's goals. No, yeah. I mean, you can start tomorrow. Like, it doesn't have to be New Year's. But um, I feel like this past year has been really such a great year for the most part. And a lot of um, good things have happened and successful things have happened. And so um, I don't think I've had a low enough year to make me feel like, oh, I got to make a lot of changes. Like, yeah. I'm pretty content with life. And sometimes contentment's not a great thing. Like, I agree that... You know, you should always try to be better. I think our but... kids will challenge us in enough ways that we don't have to necessarily <laughs> stretch ourselves in a bunch mm-hmm. of other ways. You know, having five kids in, in various stages of development uh, yeah. can bring in some sort of challenge. Um, we always try, you know, as far as like financially, we always try to like gross profit. We always try to like make higher each year just to make sure that we're doing the right thing. You know, you yeah. don't want to see that lower. Um, so that's always a goal we have in mind of kind of like, OK, we got to make sure that things are steadily moving upward. Um, so that's always in the back of our mind. I mean, and fitness wise, it's always in the back of my mind or even in the front of my mind, really that, you know, Tyler made me go on the in body the other day and that was, it was some good and some bad, but that's been on my mind. <laughs> and Mindset shift because so, it looked fine. So, but it didn't look great. It, fine is a, is an appropriate word for that. But, but, you know, getting, getting some things on the in body to look better numbers and to eat a little bit healthier is always good things in my mind. Um, you know, planning vacations is always something that excites me and goals toward making that happen. And, um, I don't know. Maybe the first three months of the year, you just have a goal of sanity yeah. during competition. Oh Honestly. And that's part of it. A lot of times I feel Survival. pretty renewed and restarted like in April. Yeah. I'll be like, set yes, I have my weekends again. <laughs> set a 2000, April, 2003 goals. Yeah. Then you have a few months to think. Right. About. Right. Cause, cause it is, we feel pretty like, you know, between competitive gymnastics, boys gymnastics, women's gymnastics, it's every week. Running the business, uh-huh. trying to keep yeah. the family flow. It feels it feels like yeah. a lot for the next three three. And just months. hosting a competition too. Hosting we always the host the one in March, and then it's just kind of like we love it. It actually is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. And so sometimes that is a little bit of sometimes January, February, March are our survival months, and that's okay. It makes us appreciate when it's not just yeah. surviving. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I I think I think. For me, I think about a little growth. Like my goal is just always to, we talk about financially with the gym, you know, just a little bit of growth. And I think that's with myself as well. It's just just little bits here and there that I'm, I'm not trying to bite off huge, huge chunks at this point in my life, but just if I can get a little bit more fit, if I can get a little smarter, if I can yeah. get a little, you know, a little wiser, just, just little bits here and there. And I realize that's really not good goal setting because that's no, not I, I it's actually too, love that too generic but i just i just like the idea of just always stumbling forward in 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 some regard and if and if the business is doing that and if i'm doing that in my personal life where i'm just kind of trending trending in the right direction golf we can just all just trend in the right direction every year for the rest of our lives that'd yeah. be great and when people set goals differently you know that you are setting goals it's just inside it's internal and it's intrinsic and you're reaching that yeah. Whereas, you know, someone can state a goal all day long. Doesn't mean you're going to reach it. Yeah. Right. But if everybody could continuously be a little better, 
Yeah. Right. Get a little better every day. I mean, I, I got to come up with be- ways of make- measuring that. I mean, I could probably just ask my wife and be like, oh, it's a little bit better this year. And maybe she'd let me know. But um, She'll let me know. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Right on here. I actually would like to do a whole other separate podcast where we could tell the world what you need to work on. That's a good I idea. think that would be oh, we could, so helpful. We could take an hour with that. We could do that. We'll schedule that. We'll schedule that right now. Uh, no, but goals are good. Goals are great, and just being a little bit better every day, and just and sometimes it takes a really bad day to go like, oh, I was a crappy person today. I need to get more sleep. I need to eat healthier and be a better person tomorrow. <laughs> so that's kind of a big one for me. If I get eight hours of sleep, I am on top of the world. Yeah, I'll get it done. But. <laughs> Sleep. So, yeah. So there's just certain things that I know, like, that are helpful in my life to make good things happen. It's true. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it's those little things that make everything better that we don't want to recognize. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I want to stay up and watch a movie. Mm-hmm. But if I go to sleep, I'm going to oh, be more man. productive. I'm going to be a better mom. I'm going to be a better dad. I'm gonna oh, the be days of staying business. up late are yeah. so beyond, like, I'm not even interested in that. I, yeah. I don't like the person I am the next day. Someone, so. <laughs> someone's like, oh, are you going to stay up? For, uh, no. Till midnight on the first. I'm no, like, I'm not. No. Why would I Why would do I, that? Yeah. No. Yeah. I have to no start desire. the new year off like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good Zero. night at ten thirty. Zero to <laughs> We can watch the ball drop in New York. It'll be fine. By the way, why do we watch a ball drop? I don't know. It's probably some occult symbolism. <laughs> probably. It, it's got to be. Like it's some Illuminati crap that. <laughs> I'll look it up. Yeah. We'll find it. Yeah. But yeah, a ball dropping? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's watch a ball drop. <laughs> right, right. Happy New Year. You can go to bed now. Yep. Yay. That is kind of the most anti-climatic. Like, yeah. at least on the 4th of July, we're like watching fireworks and stuff like yeah. A ball drop. Like the New Year just hit puberty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Not and balls on that note. <laughs> <laughs> Too much testosterone in this room. I'm out. Well, it's it's all that iron you've been pumping. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Just, just to, just on top of everything that we've said, uh, surrounding yourself with awesome people is also really helpful for building up and goals. I have definitely noticed that this year of like, you know, when someone's dragging you down or someone's building you up and it makes such a difference. Yeah. Like not only do I want to be the person that lifts people up, I also want to surround myself by people who are positive and lift me up. Yeah. And that's, like that's been really awesome with your guys' friendship for sure. You know yeah, what I mean? Right back like, at you guys. Like it's great to be surrounded by people who lift you up and encourage you. There's no jealousy. It's just, hey, like we all just want to be awesome together. Yeah. You know, get excited for each other. Mm-hmm. Want to see everybody succeed. Yeah, yeah. Help really each other fun. succeed. Yeah, that's really fun. I love that. Get a get a ride down to Las Vegas at in the middle of the night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, so, whatever it's whatever, <laughs> whatever. Man, it's so true though. I mean, surrounding yourself. I mean, we wouldn't even be talking about goals right now if it wasn't for Tyler. Well, but right back at you guys. All the ideas that we've ever done were your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take yeah, credit, but I'll take credit the, for some the of them. Implementing but... them is huge. Yeah, having, having the gumption and the vision to be like, yeah, let's make it let's happen. Let's make that I'm work. Gonna, we're gonna do it, and you do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's cool. and that's awesome. But yeah. being surrounded by people that are they want to see it happen yeah no it's just funny because you know we'll talk about the rock wall i'm like well it wasn't really our idea it was, it was just <laughs> we talk about the bus and we're like well that was actually justin's idea <laughs> so it's where it started and then, and then, hey and then crossfit it was all you and that well other than like it's our favorite thing. the one that we we purchased so mm. you know we we purchased the business yeah. we didn't start it yeah but here's what's crazy but you've made it into what it is yeah. which is awesome it's tyler tried to convince me to come to crossfit for like oh yeah five to seven no, years no it's not for us before it's not for us it took covid mm-hmm. talking about a blessing in disguise right right for us to join crossfit hey and that's we been... can't open our doors come work out with us okay fine we'll just go hang out with our friends like that sounds great. And next thing you know, it's our five day week. We love this. <laughs> yeah, my only regret with that time is that I still worked at the fire department, so I didn't get more time. You did? Mm-hmm. When did you quit? What year was that? Was it later that year? It was later that year. Oh yeah. Gosh. Because there were days that I couldn't come work out, but yeah. I wanted to. Yeah. Because most days it was seven thirty. Well, and I'm, I remember working out with Trish and Kira and being like, and us just talking about whatever yeah. and just kind of working so out and fun. it being. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Oh, but it was so great just to learn that kind of, for me, again, talking about not wanting to fail. Hey, I can fail in front of all my best friends. Sounds great. Like, I can do that. Just not <laughs> I'm public. not willing to fail in front of everyone else. So being able to fail a lot in the beginning was nice to do that in private. It's also cool what you can do in two years, though. Like, think of yourself now yeah. versus two years ago. Yeah, almost three. 
Almost three. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. It's been so fun. She's getting so strong. We did oh, a workout so the other strong. day and we got done with it and like we were doing the same weight and I was yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. I have no technique though. I could do a lot more if I could figure out technique, but that's fine. But there are literally Olympic lifters that work their entire life on that technique. Yeah. And it is their lift. So like we were talking about that, that Madison lady before. Right. You know, she started when she was in her early twenties. Yeah. That is her life. Right. That's all she does all day long. It's amazing. And she'll work into her forties doing it. Yeah. And then there will probably be some transition to some other type of weightlifting. It's just yeah. their life. Well, and that's what's so fun. I feel like we can just we just keep learning new things. We keep getting a little bit better. And it's relatable to my kids who are working so hard in yeah. gymnastics. I was just talking to, on the way home today. I was kind of like, they were like, we're so tired. And can we go out to lunch? And I was like, no. You know, hey, if you you guys start competition this next week, you guys need to be getting a little more sleep. You guys need to be I mean, a little better I, nutrition. I perform so much better when I'm my protein's on point. My sugar is less. My sleep is good. I'm like, yeah. man, you guys, these things really matter Let's do this when you're an athlete. Yeah. And I definitely see a difference in, you know, just even fun, fun having fun here and feeling like I'm, you know, making progress here um, when those things are followed. Yeah. So. Well, how you do anything is how, how you, you do, do everything. everything. So <laughs> you do it here and it transfers to other parts of your mm-hmm. life. Yeah. And I don't choose to follow a lot of experts because COVID's made me very untrusting. Of people. <laughs> um, but a few experts, one is Stan Efforting. He talks the importance of three 10 minute walks a day yeah. for cardiovascular health. Right. CrossFit's part of that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, at least warming up is like a 10 minute walk. Right. Yep. Andrew Huberman, one to one and a half grams of protein per pound that we weigh. Mm-hmm. Non-negotiable. Yeah. That's what you do. If you do those two things, life is so much Well, better. like you were even talking about this morning about <clears throat> protein and how that's so preventable and helpful healing with inner yeah. injuries or preventing injuries. Protein's huge for that. Yeah. You know? we're, not, we're not taught that. Yeah. The, the experts that we listen to are the wrong ones. Right. Right. So no, I know what makes me feel good and, and following, following that is, is life changing. Yeah. And then that example that you're giving to your kids, I also think that's invaluable because. Well, we just, don't know everything, but it's nice yeah. to like at least be doing something that we can help um, hey, you know, we're kind of doing the same thing you are, not on a competitive level, but a fun trying to get strong level. And this is something that's really helped us. Why don't you try it too? Yeah. You know, I wish I'd had that as like doing athlete athletic stuff in high school. Like I wish I would have had someone being like, oh, me too. You know, hey, go eat some protein. Yep. Uh, okay. I yep. didn't know. You know, not to mention it opens up doors to see what you really can be good at. I mean, I was just talking to someone in CrossFit down there an hour ago and they're like, I was a big runner growing up. And if I hadn't run, my daughter would have never ran. Mm -hmm. And because she ran, she ends up going and being this awesome collegiate runner. But had I kind of never set that example of moving or doing that, she would have never known her potential Mm -hmm. or or found this joy or this hobby or this thing that she ended up being really good at in her life. Is that Kelsey? It was. Yeah. She bring her on. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Her daughter is pretty awesome and she's posted a few things and i'm like oh wow I they're no yeah they're cool that's people. so cool yeah i was like oh, that's a really good example and we were kind of yeah. talking about just why we do hard things uh daniel and i uh, were talking about you know iron man or long bikes and things and sometimes it's just to show your kids that you can do hard things yeah yeah i need to run a marathon Yes, you do. <laughs> just to say I did it. Just, but I, but I don't want to take away from my CrossFit. So I like have this weird, but I'm like, if I just run long distance twice a week, get my marathon out of the way, say I did it and never do it again. Just walk. <laughs> just walk the marathon. <laughs> Still counts, right? Yeah. There. Well, we can't all be Justin. I mean, J- Justin's yeah. first marathon, he like signed it up for a week, no training. He's like, I think I'll just go do a marathon next week. I think I'll just go do it. He That's did actually- it in like... That top, was, top that was five. The, that was the second one. The <laughs> first one I actually trained for and I did worse. I tried racing it and did worse. The second one I was like, I'm just going to go relax and just have a good 26 mile run. A and good. I ran <laughs> and and I just relaxed, right? And all of a right. sudden it was like, hey, wow, I actually got a PR on good. that one. But, Taylor, have you done a marathon? I can't remember. Just a half. Just a half. Yeah. No desire to do a full. Well, I kind of did. I signed up for one and then I gave up and I didn't do oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's a whole, do, you know do, that whole story. Do, do you remember? We're screwed on that stuff, by the way. Oh, for real? So yeah, all that stuff we ordered on the cruise to, that was our credit, Yeah, it's not coming. Why? I don't know. 
So we're just out like getting oh, sounds. Sounds like there might back. be yeah some room to yeah. collect something depending on how aggressive you want to be. Oh. The most I've ever heard in my life has been with Justin. <laughs> climbing most, the, oh yeah, climbing the grand. Yes. So that that was what I, the story we were I was going to tell. About that the other I, day. I, I, who was I telling this story the other day? It's like you know CrossFit's great for a lot of things, and I remember hiking up the grand and Tyler telling me how great CrossFit was, and then coming down he's like. I'm questioning all my training methodology <laughs> that I've ever had. And I'm just, as he's like, Justin uh, throws uh, you on his uh, back. Uh, Let's go. Uh, Let's do this. No, that was so yeah. great. Every corner, we would, we would turn a corner. I'm like, this has to this be, the be the last one. Truck. <laughs> this has to be. And it was, it's like the longest hike out ever. Oh my gosh. I went to sleep that night. Um, I took an Ambien. <laughs> And I went to sleep. Kira said I was moaning. Oh. Like, Wasn't it? I actually oh. thought she said you were whimpering. Oh. Yeah, whimpering. Like, whimpering. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god. And I slept for like fourteen hours. Oh my gosh. Well, what's funny, Tyler, so is good. you and I have both seen each other at our most miserable. Oh moments. yeah. Me after Lodija. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the most. Yeah. Mi- that's the most miserable moment I've had. And <laughs> Tyler, yeah. can you come over? He's like not responding. <laughs> <laughs> come Thought save my at. husband. Yeah. <laughs> It's so nuts funny. to me that you can push yourself that far. That's actually, Christine said that the other day about you too, just yeah. um, how you have the mindset that you can just go and push and push and push. And uh, that's a gift. He has a mindset that he can do anything. Which He's is like, cool. I can do that. I can do that. I mean, I guess, I guess that is kind of a <laughs> an audacious frame of mind, but it is. It's kind of like, well, no, I'll, I'll do it. And then... <laughs> You, it's kind of back to miracles. Do it till you, you die. Just kind of yeah. whatever. Feel yourself there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, or you or you just go down in flames like I did in Lodija. Yeah. Most ultra marathon runners at some point are like I was just running off. Yeah. Of my, my Hitting mind. a yeah. wall. Yeah. Like you're not running on your body. Anymore. Right. Right. You're just right. Yeah. I don't know. Wild. I think it's really <laughs> cool to stretch yourself like that though. That's why I want to do it. I know I'll hate it. Yeah. I know I'll hate every minute. Until like the next day, I'll be like, yesterday I ran. Yeah, maybe two days later, but yeah. <laughs> um, I'd sign up for one. Yeah. I'd do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's. You run fast mind. though. Like even if I trained, you'd still run fast. I only have ever ran, the most I've ever ran is 13 miles ever. So I, every time I've done a half marathon, I'm like, and to do this again, again that's yeah. insane. Honestly though, you just get to mile like 16 and you're kind of like. Yeah. You just keep going. Well, whatever. whatever. I it's would go lot, with it go. with no like you know just my goal would be to finish, to finish it. um yeah i wouldn't go with any because i don't want to be stressed about it that's not yeah. fun for me i don't like being stressed about that i'd go as you always say whenever i've signed up for a race you're like just go for a run tomorrow morning it's just not a big deal yep. like just well go. that's what screwed me up on my first marathon was yeah. i was going with with this like really aggressive mindset and again i didn't yeah. sleep well and i got up and i was anxious and then i tried running at a pace that i really couldn't run yeah and the next time i just relaxed and i was like oh I got to mile twenty. And was like, cool. Let, let's do this. Fun. I know yeah. how to do. I know how to do a ten k. Yeah. And then I and then I raced the last six miles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of fun. The worst. <laughs> the worst. Actually, I was thinking about it in my mind though. I just want to say the worst I might have ever felt though was that day I came back from that training. Oh my gosh. I did. I did a run early in the morning and then didn't get any nutrition in and then went on a really hard bike. Yeah. And I came back. Oh, and I was I, gonna say. I thought it was like. Uh, it was like a Blackfoot or Pocatello. No. Race you oh, did that, that you about that was died. Bad too. But I, but I, but I, but I bonked. I bonked. Oh, I came yeah. back and it was just. I went into coach, and I told the boys something, and then I just laid down in a corner and just. Next thing I know, I woke up like an hour later and was like, "Whoa, well, you <laughs> good? I'm coach. glad you guys are doing what you're supposed to be doing." Mind you, this is like Brigham's era. I think yeah. you must have had like an assistant there that probably took over. I hope. I, I hope because I, but... I all of a sudden I just blacked out and was just gone, and then kind of popped out of it and was like, "Oh." I think wow. you called me. You're like, "I need food." Yeah, it was a bad one. But. Wife? Yeah, yeah right, I need right? food. I need food. Oh, she's, your job. she's way too good to me. Yeah. Part of the reason we eat as good yeah. as we do, the whole reason we eat as good as we do is because of course, I think I made like 10 meals in our marriage. Yeah, you only make pancakes really good pancakes. and eggs. That's yeah. about it. But No, Tyler, why don't you sign up? Why don't we, all three of us and Kira, I think if I signed up, I think Kira could sign up for a marathon. She too. might. I think she I would. Know. I think she would. I mean, not we right now during ice chillers. palace season. Like, she's not, like, no. You don't need Too one more thing on. to stress you out. Yeah, yeah, but I think if like I convinced her to do something like this summer, I think she would yeah. say yes. Uh, Britton and Chris are doing a Spartan. Oh, cool! I actually really want to do a Spartan. Yeah, yeah. that's one of the races yeah. I haven't done. Yeah, actually, I want to do that too. too. I want to do that too. So tell so, us which yeah. one. I mean, so technically, you could get your marathon in in a Spartan. At a, at a Spartan. Spartan. They do a they wow. do a yeah. marathon. It take like eight okay. hours. Yeah, it takes a long time. Wow. But okay. they, 
then it's like not knocking two out in one. Yeah. Could you count that as a marathon though? I don't know. You run 26 miles. Okay. Point two. (laughs) (laughs) You can run around the parking lot if you're worried about it. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. I don't Um, know. Yeah. Well, yeah. That would be super fun. We should look into that. But that shouldn't be the fun thing that we do this summer. (laughs) Oh, no. Yeah. No, we got to go see the world. (laughs) Yeah. Right? So I, maybe this is something we don't need to discuss on a podcast, but <laughs> I actually think it'd be really cool to fly down to Mexico City, do three days in the city where we're looking at uh, pyramids and the culture down there. Definitely go to a gold museum. I know you love it. <laughs> gold, or, or yeah. coins. I'll yeah. sleep. Coins. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take a yeah. nap yeah. while you guys go do that. And then get a regional flight over to like Cabo or mm-hmm. something like that. Okay. And do ah. another three days. Yes. So, or maybe four, four and three or whatever. So make it a week. You get the the pyramids and the cool mm-hmm. archaeology and then you go over and have three days of a beach then yeah that would be perfect so you get the adventure with a little bit of just yeah r and r just mm-hmm. just yeah. a little bit of rel- relaxation yeah. yeah yeah that sounds like a lot of fun yeah i've never done the mexico thing except for on a cruise so and it's so different yeah like mexico city is one of the best places on earth I don't know. Is it like Costa Rica? Remember that okay. day in Costa Rica okay. was You're... terrifying. Oh, no. Oh, well, no, uh... the whole thing is like, is like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Why is there pee all over the ground? What is this? Do you remember that? I do that was... remember that. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty gross. We were in probably one of the most ghetto spots. We were. But, uh, but it seemed pretty authentic. It's dark. Yeah. You guys need to go home. We want waffles. No, <laughs> you guys need to go home. <laughs> I don't remember someone telling us that. <laughs> uh, some some locals were like, nah, no, at, at dark, go go home. Well, didn't we ask for directions? And then they like, were like, ask for money. Like, really? I, I don't remember. Yeah, Do you remember? Yeah, they like, look for like that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. What was that first oh, place the that we went though, that it Yeah. Was, like, it was like a chocolate or... uh, yeah. place, wasn't it? Cocoa place. The waffle place? What are you talking about? I don't remember that. Yeah, there was a little might, shop, a little I think like. We might be talking about the same place. Yeah. Okay. It was like we, we went, went to the hotel and then yes. we walked down. Yeah. And it was kind of like little. Just a little hole. hole, hole okay. Yeah, a little hole yeah. in the wall, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Though. But I, I remember Kira had seen this. Um, seen this waffle house and she the whole trip was like i really want to go really want to go and so like the last night we tried to go find it and someone was like you just need to go home because <laughs> it was getting to be kind of dusk and <laughs> like, let's see that go was back in, to your hotel in san jose yeah. uh-huh okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me- mexico city doesn't have to be dangerous like we don't go to the dangerous parts yeah you have a good feel for what's dangerous or not. Also, also on that trip, we were walking around town, and you're like, "We got to make it back before dark." We, were, oh, you didn't want to. We didn't want to cut through that village. You're like, "No, yeah. we're gonna go the long way around." I'm like, "Why? No, we're not going through the village." Because <laughs> I want to have a podcast. In three <laughs> I was just going, "Oh yeah, let's just go back the way we came." But good thing you were there to be like, "No, you don't." That was fun. Thanks for saying that. I, I think I think this is a couple years out, but I really want to go to Jerusalem. Yeah, I would love that. I really want to go over there and just spend a week to 10 days and yep. just get a sense of... With a really good tour guide. Oh my goodness, yeah. Just mm-hmm. a very right. biblical tour guide. Yeah, yep. I think... It, That's actually, what we I missed in Tulum. To, I yeah. wanted a good tour guide and we didn't get that. Yeah. That was such a bummer. Well, uh, several of my cousins have, getting, have gone to BYU Jerusalem mm-hmm. and uh, just really know and kind of understand the area. And I, th- I think they could convince one of them to go along. They loved right. it. And they, they said it was... Just really amazing. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be so cool. Yeah, so, yeah. That's a bit of a trip. Lots of fun things. Lots of good things in life. Isn't that isn't that what is what's amazing though? Is we could travel every summer mm-hmm. and go and explore. I wouldn't even still not we see even, it all. Yeah. Wouldn't even. That's what's hard to go back to the same places though. Yeah. Right. It's because yeah. you're like oh, but I mean, you've been in Nicaragua and and several other places, several other places that we haven't, and it's like. But what's around the next corner? Yeah, but I'd still, Peru. I'd still go back. Like, yeah, let's do Peru. Yeah. We need to do it all. It's just... So we, we, we like our goal needs to be to have more time and more money. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Oh, that's great. Traveling's fun. I agree. Well, I appreciate you guys. Yeah. You're awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Um, it's fun to um, chat. Yeah, fun to chat and just get your perspective and and learn. Yeah. So we love it. Thanks for having us. Your yeah. history. And, Thanks, Tyler. Yeah. If you guys ever need anything, let us know. Um, I mean, I always ask this to people, and I don't know if you even care, but... Like, how can people find you? Mostly gymnastics center. We try center. to stay hidden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Madison Gymnastics Center in Rexburg. Yeah. AA1, Jetstream Drive, and now 887. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yep. 
But no, we, we're we always enrolling. And, uh, you know, I think, again, it, it's not a hard, I feel like gymnastics is uh, just like swimming. It's a lifetime skill. Yeah. And so if you, if you want your kids to be, you know, strong, well-equipped kids, it's a, like you'll say, jujitsu, mm-hmm. gymnastics, CrossFit. It's so good. It's just another kids. avenue. Yeah. So good. So, yeah. It's yeah. been so good for our kids. And some of the best coaches that we've ever met are, well, you. <laughs> and, um, and and coaches there at the gym. Yeah, we've got so. such great staff. We're so lucky. Very, very blessed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's awesome. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Tyler. Yeah, have a good day.